Hello, folks. Pastor Rocky Branch. Hope you're doing great today. Well, take your Bibles. Put me on pause here for a second. Take your Bibles. Join me in the book of Genesis, chapter number 32. Now, uh, today is a very important day. We're snowed in for the most part. I mean, folks can get out, maybe four-wheel drives, maybe having to go somewhere. But for the most part, uh, most of us are snowed in. And it's very important to consider what God is doing in times like this. Because, you know, you, you look on the television, you try to find something to watch, you maybe find an old movie, uh, maybe some reruns of Andy Griffith, or, you know, whatever the case may be, news, talk shows, whatever, and you find yourself getting a little weary watching television. Well, you look outside, you want to build a snowman, you don't, you want to get snow cream, you don't, whatever the case may be, you get a little weary, and then, of course, you have to deal with the decision of boredom and all that good stuff. Well, I, I contend to you that I want to bring a different approach to you because I believe God's wanting to do some stuff during these quiet times. Now, you know, we're so busy. We're running around everywhere. And there comes a time, you know, when God just stops us, you know, and we have to think about some stuff. And it's very important that not to let that time go to waste because we don't have times like this very much because we're always doing something. We've always got something to do. We've always, uh, we're always running here. We're running there. We're always involved in something. Well, you know, God, when he gets us quiet, he can speak to us. If we will listen and we will understand that we are quiet for a reason. So this snow, uh, this time of being down could be very valuable to you in the spirit. There's a story about Jacob and Esau, and you remember the story probably about how that Jacob uh, robbed Esau, his brother, of his blessing. And it's a great story, a long story, but point being is that in this 32nd chapter, Jacob is coming back after 20 years to meet with Esau, of whom he had wronged, by the way. And Esau had said 20 years earlier, when dad dies, I'm going to kill you because he had robbed him of his blessing. Well, uh, Jacob was a trickster, you know, he was a crook. He he had the 12 sons where we get the 12 tribes of Israel from. That's where we get those, Jacob's 12 sons. And of course, now Jacob has, uh, you know, he's been gone for these years and he's coming back. Now, the Bible tells us a, a number of things about Jacob that we need to understand. Uh, we recognize the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So we understand that part of it. But we also understand that Jacob was a man that had to be challenged by who he was. And it's very important to understand some of the principal effects of what happened in Jacob's life. Well, he is coming back to meet his brother after all these years. Uh, God sends him back to his home. Uh, he had been gone over to Laban's house, which is his uncle, and he stayed there in a far country for a, a number of years, 20 exact. So he's on his way back, and the Bible says that he's sending ahead of him uh, his uh, his gift for his brother. He's trying to buy his forgiveness. And he sends animals and he sends his children and his wives, as Leah and Rachel, sends them ahead. And the Bible says something very important. I want you to look with me now in your Bibles. Look with me, please. In Genesis 32, the Bible says in verse number uh, 23, uh, he took them and sent them over the brook and sent them over and sent over that he had. So what he's what it says and it leads up to this is that Jacob is sending those over uh, to meet his brother Esau. So what happens here is verse 24 says, and Jacob was left alone, and there he wrestled with a man until the breaking of the day. Now excuse me here uh, for just a minute. <laughs> my nose running a little bit. That happens in the winter time, so just excuse that and we'll move on. So Jacob was left alone, and there he wrestled with a man until the breaking of day. Now, Jacob was left alone. Here's one of the points of the message. At some point in your life, you have to feel like nobody else is there. Now, obviously, God was with uh, Jacob, and God will be with you. But there, it's important that you feel sometimes like you're by yourself as far as outside help goes, because you have to, you have to learn to depend upon the Lord. You have to, inside of you, understand that children are going to leave, uh, spouses are going to die, family members are going to uh, die. You have to understand that your life is in Christ. And here Jacob is left alone, and he wrestled with the man of God, the angel of God, 
uh, to the breaking of day. And when and when he saw that it was he could not prevail against him, the uh, angel touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh, which means that he put his leg out of joint and uh, kind of dislocated the his hip. Uh, and the Bible says that uh, Jacob uh, wrestled with him and wouldn't let him go. And even though the break of the day came, the angel said, I've got to go. And uh, Jacob said, I will not leave you except you bless me. Now, Jacob had obtained the blessing from his brother Esau in an unjust fashion. There's no doubt about that. Uh, Isaac was blind. Uh, he was old. Uh, Jacob had, in fact, you can turn back if you want to, uh, you can see uh, actually exactly where all this took place. Uh, you can go back to, uh, well, let's see. Let me, you can go back to uh, Genesis uh, 27, and you can see that uh, Isaac was blind, and, and Jacob uh, kind of tricked him, and, and he did that with the help of his mother. A whole different message over in here, really good stuff. But Esau says, because of this trickery, uh, in verse 41 of chapter 27, he says to Jacob, when I see you again, I'm going to kill you uh, when dad's, the days of dad's mourning are over. So there's a lot of stuff in this family that goes on. So Jacob uh, has, has ran, uh, and now he is locked away, coming back, and he's left by himself. And he wrestles with the man of God, and the, the man of God has to break his hip or put it out of joint. Uh, so uh, Jacob says, uh, I'm not going to let you go. In verse 26 of Genesis 32, I'm not going to let you go except you bless me. Now, Jacob wanted the blessing of God the right way. He had obtained it the wrong way, but he wanted it the right way. And he said, I'm not going to let you go till you bless me. And the angel of God, the, the man of God, said in verse 27 of Genesis 32, what is your name? Now, Jacob had to make a confession here. Jacob had been a trickster. He had been a crook. He had been a... a, a he he just been a, a, a kind of a, well, he'd been a dishonest fella. Uh, in Laban's, uh, the 20 years he'd been with Laban, Laban was more dishonest than, than Jacob was. So, in other words, Jacob had to be honest to get his blessing. When you're left alone and nobody else is around, like the snow days when you're locked in, it's a good time for God to do some work on you. And it's a good time for you to be honest with God because, you know, we run all the time. We're busy all the time. We're saying, well, I don't have time for this. Well, now, you know, God's got you at a point where you can talk to him and be honest because he already knows anyway, by the way. God already knows what's going on. And Jacob was asked, what is your name? Now, the reason this is significant is because when Jacob tricked his father Isaac, his father Isaac asked him what his name was. Back over here in Genesis 27. And Isaac had skins on his arms to make him feel like his brother Esau because Isaac was blind. And Jacob, rather, had these skins on his arms to make him uh, feel like Esau. And what happens is that uh, Jacob says to his father, his blind father, I am Esau. And uh, Isaac said, you feel like Esau, but you sound like Jacob. And he tricked his dad. And he tricked everybody. But it came down to a point where God said to him, if you want to be blessed, you got to be honest. And I'm saying to you today, there may be a thousand excuses you're using why you're not where you're supposed to be. And it could be a thousand different people. But you're by yourself today, or at least you're confined, more so than normal. And there's a time that you're going to have to be honest with exactly who you are. And when this angel of God, the man of God, however you look at this passage, whoever Jacob was wrestling, when he said, who are you? What is your name? This is the first time he was asked that question since Isaac asked it over in the 27th chapter and 20 years had passed by. And Jacob had to be honest to get his blessing. And he simply said, my name is Jacob. And the angel said, you will no more be called Jacob, but Israel, and you shall be a prince, and you shall have power with God and with men because you have prevailed. Now, why is that important? Because Jacob had to be left alone. He had to deal with his past in order to get to his future. He had to be honest 
Now, now hear me this morning. If you want the blessings of God, it makes no difference where you've been, who you have wronged, or what you've been complacent about. If you want the blessings of God, you have got to be honest. You may be a grouch. You may be somebody that, that uh, complains all the time. You may be somebody that brings other people down. You might be someone that lies, steals, cheats, drinks, cusses. I don't know, whatever. But, I, but I'm telling you this. If you want the blessings of God, you have got to be honest. And when the angel of God asked Jacob, what is your name? Jacob had to be honest in order to get the blessing. And Jacob said, I am a trickster. I'm a, I'm a crook. That's what Jacob means, a surplanter, a trickster. I'm dishonest. That's, that's what he meant because that's who he was. And the Bible says, the angel of the Lord said unto him, you shall no more be called Jacob, but, but Israel. Now, we know that that's where Israel comes into the Bible. We talk about Israel, the nation of Israel. We know that Jacob's name was changed to Israel. We understand that. If you don't understand that, then that's that's where it comes in at. Excuse me. My nose is running, as my grandmother would say, like a sugar tree. But, but check this out for a second. In Isaiah 44, I want you to see this. So flip over there, Isaiah 44. You'll find it. Just keep on going. Isaiah 44, uh, listen, listen to this verse. Isaiah 44, verse 2. Let me read it, verse 1. Isaiah 44, verse 1. Yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen. Thus saith the Lord that made thee and formed thee from the womb, speaking of Jacob, which will help thee. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and thou, Jezerun, whom I have chosen. Now, in Isaiah... Uh, Jacob is called Jezerun. Now there's a great reason for that. Because in this 32nd chapter, when he was left alone, he had to do business with God by being honest. When he was honest, God changed his name to Israel, which is a prince among men, and uh, having power with God. And Isaiah comes along and says, Jacob, you are Jezerun, which if you look it up in the Hebrew, Jezerun means altogether straight. Now hear me. Jacob walked with that limp the rest of his life. He walked with a limp on the outside. But on the inside, he was Jezerun. He was altogether straight. Listen, you're going to have some battle scars. You're going to have some, some, some issues with where you have been and what you've done. And you may have some things that you cannot avoid because of what you've done where you've been. But I want to tell you something. Jacob changed. Physically, he limped where before he could walk perfect. But inwardly, he was perfect where before he limped. He had been changed inside and his life magnified God to the degree that when Joseph took the family into Egypt, the Bible says that that Jacob, when he was brought before Pharaoh, dragging his leg, as he went before Pharaoh, the greatest man in the world, the Bible says twice that Jacob blessed Pharaoh. Friend, I want to tell you, God wants to use you. God wants to help you. God wants to remind you, and God wants to deliver you. But you and I, we must be honest. If we're not honest, God can't help us. God can do anything, but he's not going to bless sin. And you have to—you don't have to get on the housetop and shout it, but you and I need to be honest in order for God to bless us. Jacob limped on the outside the rest of his life, but on the inside he was Jezerun. He was altogether straight. What about you today? Let me encourage you today that during this downtime of where you are, where you're staying, what's going on in your life right now, let me encourage you. Get in the book. Find out with God, are you altogether straight or are you putting up some game and you're playing somebody that you're not? See, these down times are beneficial to us because God wants to help us. He wants to encourage us. You be blessed today 
God bless you. We love you. And goodbye.